If you have baked some normal maps, especially on hard surface models, you may have encountered this kind of result, where elements like screw, holes, or similar hard surface details appear displaced towards one side, instead of appearing centered like this second example right here. This is caused by texture skewing. If you bake using marbles at toolbag, it's pretty easy to solve, because there is an option to paint on different parts of the model after the bake, and the software will take it into account. But if you are using Substance Painter, it's a bit more tricky to solve, but it's still possible. First, import your 3D model into Substance and come to the baking menu. I've already set the baking options, most of them doesn't affect the skewing anyway, and are only important for the bake quality. So I disable super sampling and GPU intensive options because I want fast baking for this example. The only important option regarding the skewing is average normals. It's activated by default because it gets better results on the edges of the model. With the new cage visualization, it's easy to see how it works. When average normals is active, the cage is continuous, so there won't be any gaps during the bake, resulting in perfectly baked edges, but texture skew on some details. If you deactivate average normals, the cage will follow the face normals, resulting in gaps on the cage that could create artifacts on the edges, but you also get perfectly baked details without any so, in order to fix the skewing, we will have to make two different bakes and merge them, getting the texture information we need from both of them. First, I'm gonna bake activating average normals, but the order is not important. In addition to the normal map, I'm gonna bake other maps that can be affected by skewing, like ambient occlusion, thickness, curvature, ID map or bend normals. After the bake has finished, I'll export all the maps to a new folder, called ABG for example. Then I'll make again the same bake, but with average normals disabled. And again, after the bake has finished, I'll export these textures to a different folder. After all the bakes are prepared, I'll clean the substance file, deleting all the mesh maps we baked. Then I'll go to one of the folders with the baked textures and change the names, so we can distinguish between both bakings. If you are using new themes, the process is exactly the same, but you will have more textures to work with, and must be careful with leaving the dot .1000 suffix, because if you break that naming convention, substance won't detect you are importing new themes. From here, you have two options to prepare your fixed maps. First, you could bring the baked maps to any image editing software like Photoshop, GIMP or Affinity Photo. And the second option, keep using Substance Painter to fix them. If you go for using Photoshop, it's pretty straightforward. I just import the average normals bake as background, and then import the non-average normals bake. Also export a UV layout from your modeling software for easier visualization. Then delete all the parts that you don't need from the non-average normals baked textures, leaving only the details you want to fix the skewing. You could work non-destructive using masks, but I'm not gonna come back to this file, so I prefer making a hidden layer to make fast selections and delete every part of the textures that aren't needed. If you prefer using this method, then all you need to do is export your fixed textures to use them. If you want to fix them using Substance Painter, then I'll have to go back to our previous file and import all the textures we baked it before. Then I'll delete all the texture channels on the file and create the ones I need. First, the base color for the ID map, then the ambient occlusion and the normal map. For the rest of the textures, I'll create three user custom channels, two for the curvature and thickness, and the last for the bend normals. I'll name leaving the user 0, 1 or 2, so I don't forget which channel contains which information, because this will be important when we export our fixed textures a bit later. At last, I'll set the channel info to 16 bits for ambient occlusion, thickness and curvature, and RGB 16F for the bend normals. With the channel set, I'll create two field layers the second one with a black mask. I'll activate all the channels on both layers and fill them with our baked textures. Similar to the previous Photoshop method, fill layer 1 will contain the average normals bake, and the second fill layer will contain the non-average normals bake. Then I'll set the blend mode to normal in all channels on both fill layers. Now, I just have to paint the mask to show the details from the non-average normals bake we want. If I leave enable the normal channel on the second fill layer, but deactivate the other channels, we can see how the skewing was affecting those textures, and without this correction, could have led to a bad result while texturing, or at least more time working to solve problems. Also, there are a couple of baking errors in this planner phase. I'll create a paint layer and use color picking to fix those artifacts. It's not the topic of this tutorial, but I think it's interesting to show how this workflow could be used to fix different kind of artifacts on different textures. 
At last, I want to export the fixed textures, so I can create a new substance file, import them and start working properly on my texturing. For that, I'll go to the export textures tab and create a new texture output template. In this case, I'll need an RGB output for the base color or in this case the ID map, then two more RGB outputs for the normal map. I'll export the DirectX version and the bed normals from the user customized channel we created before. Finally, three gray channels for the ambient occlusion, thickness and curvature maps. I'll set all of them as PNG files with 16 bits, but you could choose any file format you prefer. And then I'll change the naming convention of the outputs. I'll name all of them as the texture I want to export, for example normal map or ID map, and then add the texture set name and the UDIM. Add a point between the texture set and UDIM name, because if you don't do it, Sustan Painter won't detect the textures as part of a UDIM setup. And that will be all we need to do. Just come back to export the textures, and then you can clean up this Sustan Painter file, or just create a new one and start working on your model with your fixed textures. So thanks for watching and have a nice day.